I want to introduce you to potentially the next big thing in programming, which is programming in natural language. So this is what GPT script allows us to do. And what it helps you to do is easily interact with an LLM, right? So traditionally with Python and with JavaScript, sometimes it's very messy to work with these LLMs. That's also why you have Langchain and these other abstractions. But GPT script tackles that problem at the programming language level. So an example of a GPT script is the following. So I can create a file with the GPT extension. That's really nice. So if you want to build an app, you can just do it in natural language, right? So here I can say, perform the following steps, all in normal, plain English. So this app expects a photo to be uploaded. It will grab a list of ingredients from that photo. It creates a file with all the ingredients in there. And then based on that, it will actually suggest a recipe. This is what we as programmers, we just write down. And then under the hood, GPT script will actually make network calls to OpenAI to actually make this work. So this is one of the examples they have. They have multiple examples in that Git repo. But let's say we are actually building an app. So you do need some kind of UI. So they have a UI here and here with this Python file file, Python server, this is all boilerplate standard Python server code. The meat of the logic now is coming from GPT script in which we've described things in natural language. So now I can go here, upload a file, vegetables, let's say I have this image of my cart and I'm going to upload this and let's see what GPT script will produce for us. Let me make this a little bit smaller, right? So now it's making those calls to open AI, right? This is all standard Python code. We uploaded this image from the front end. And ultimately here, what it's doing is it's invoking this GPT script, right? And here we are describing things in natural language. And the way this is structured is with so-called tools. So everything here is a tool. So here, for example, when I upload that image, it will use this GPT script tool to actually see what's in the image, right? So this tool will actually make a network call to OpenAI for their, their vision model and ask OpenAI what's in that image. Right? And we're also saying, hey, you, you may also use these other tools. So here we have another tool, Recipe Generator. This is actually a custom one that we have defined down here. So here we're saying from a list of ingredients, generate a recipe. We are not instructing the LLM to invoke any of these tools. It can autonomously decide which tool to invoke. Now, under the hood, it's actually using the GPT-4 Turbo model by OpenAI. And it does some smart things with function calling and, and dealing with context windows. Right, so now actually I get a result already. And here we are getting some ingredients from that image. And then it has even given us this wonderful recipe, right? So this is an even higher level than doing all of this with Python or JavaScript. This is just plain natural language and essentially describing which tools to use. There are also some built-in ones like reading and writing, because if we take a look here, we specified here under number two, that it should create a file called ingredients, which is this one right here. So it actually created a file here, right? So that's the system that write tool that can do that. We don't have to manually invoke that. That's all abstracted away once you start describing this in natural language, right? And then it needs to read that to create an actual recipe here in Markdown as well, right? So it can also read, but we don't have to manually invoke those tools or even write anything like, you know, uh, file system read file, like you, right? So we can now describe what we want to do at an even higher level. So I think that's pretty cool. So this may be an important tool that you're going to use as a programmer. It's created by Acorn Labs and they are also today's sponsor. They have some other examples. I customized them a little bit. So let's say we're building some kind of trip planner app, right? So I could spin up like an express or some UI and the user can input the location on which they're going to a trip. Let's say Paris or Italy, right? And then on the back end, what we would traditionally do is write Python or JavaScript to query an LLM to generate some nice suggestions for the user. Now, if you've done that before, you know how messy that can get. So now with GPT script, if I want to interact with an LLM, I can create a GPT file here. And here, again, it's all structured in tools, right? So you compose these tools together to create an app, essentially, right? So here, essentially, the top tool here is suggest three activities for a short trip. And you can invoke the research agent tool is what I'm telling the LLM, essentially, right? This tool is actually defined here. It's just a custom tool that we have defined in the same file. This tool, in turn, can invoke another tool called search, okay? and also a built-in one. And this tool, what can it do? Well, well, the name, it's doing some research. So here, before starting your job, do a quick search to refresh your knowledge on what it means to be a travel agent. So when the LLM will read this, do a quick search, and it knows it can invoke a tool called search, it may decide to invoke this 
search tool. What does the search tool do? It can actually search the internet for content and download that, right? And then we tell the LLM to do some other things as well. And that should ultimately result in itinerary plans. So let me actually invoke this. I can invoke it standalone. I don't have to create a whole web server. Chat DPT, invoke the execute the trip planner file. Okay, so let's see what happens. So now it's gonna run this file. And you can see that I need to specify an input. And so here you can see that I do need to specify an argument here. Okay, that right, makes sense. We, we, we need to specify where we want to go for the activities. Right, so we're going to go to, uh, let's make it Rome. Okay, so now it will actually make a bunch of calls to OpenAI and it will log the process here. So here it's waiting for the model response, right? Waiting for OpenAI to respond. And we can see that it has already called the research agent tool. Right, so it starts here and it has all right, and the LLM has decided to invoke this this research agent tool. So now we are getting more output here. So here and uh, step three here is well, it's actually decided to invoke the search tool an autonomously decided input here. So here this search tool also expects an argument here to search the internet for, and it has decided itself what it should be. That's pretty cool. So that it's gonna do so it's gonna do an actual search, it will download the HTML and convert that to text. That's a that's a built-in utility here. That's a built-in tool here as well. All right, so then here, eventually, it already starts to produce the result that we want. All right, so then eventually, we have a result here. So we have our input, and then the output is indeed an itinerary plan for the trip. And now I could return this as part of a web server to the UI and show to the user. All right, so last example I want to show you is this image generator app. Right, so we just have a standard boilerplate here with JavaScript to spin up a web server. But the idea here is that we can have a description here. It will generate a logo for them, right? So these are artists. So basically an AI logo generator app. Now we can actually first get some new artists. So there are basically two things we can do here, generate an image and also get new artist descriptions. Right, so here, if I click that button, we're gonna invoke this new artist API route handler, and it's going to pass an instruction here. And so here we're gonna prepare some instructions for the model, get us some new artist description. And here we are actually using GPT script where we can use one of their tools to pass those instructions, specify which tool to use. So here we allow to create a new file. So this tool, will take the instructions and will make the actual network call, right? So they actually also have an ability here to use GPT script as an NPM module, right? So you can install this with NPM. This will be passed to the LLM. The LLM will decide if it's gonna invoke a certain tool. We want a JSON response, right? So this is maybe a nicer API to deal with GPT script in JavaScript. Okay, so let's actually try this out. I'm gonna click on new artist and that will take some time. All right, so after a couple seconds, we get a response here. And now we wanna generate logos for these descriptions. So there is another API route here that we can invoke. And here it will also prepare some instructions. We want to get logos for each one. And we can say, hey, we can use GPT script where we say, hey, use this DALI image generator. This, this tool will actually make a network call to the DALI model to generate an image based on these instructions, but all natural language, right? So we're not writing any Python or JavaScript uh, code here. It's just describing in natural language what we want, right? We want to get a logo for each one. We want to have a response in JSON. So let's see what we get. Submit, run. It's going to invoke that route handler here. Let's see. All right. And after a couple seconds, we get some images here and we didn't even write any code or traditional code to interact with the LLM. We only wrote it in natural language and we used GPT script to take that natural language, these instructions, and specify which tools to use, which in turn may have natural language descriptions. And we got a result back. Now they actually have a lot of examples here. I just showed you three, but right now, if you're doing any kind of work with AI and you wanna get an easier way to interact with that LLM, highly recommend you just go through the examples here and see if you can simplify your interactions with the LLMs. OpenAI, not only OpenAI supported, also Mistral on Azure, Cloud on Anthropic, Tropic and Gemini on Google. But the team behind it is thinking about local models as well. And there are many things I could show you here, right? So here they have some other use cases here, RAG and chatbots potentially. So if you quickly want to try it out, it's very easy on the quick start here, right? So on macOS, you would just uh, copy paste this in your terminal and it will, it's going to install GPT script. On Windows, it will be similar. After you install GPT script, you do need to get an API key from OpenAI, right? Because under the hood, GPT script is going to make those network calls to the OpenAI models for you. And it's going to use GPT-4 Turbo as of recording. So you do need to have access to that, right? So here in OpenAI, under API keys, you can create an API key. And once you have one, you can actually 
uh, use it in your terminal like this, right? So when you're actually going to invoke those examples, make sure you actually add your API key. Uh, I can press enter here, and then this API key will work for the subsequent commands in that terminal window, okay? And then they show you how to run hello world. Now, what I recommend is that you actually just clone this whole repo. So git clone, you will get this. And then in the examples folder, they have all these examples. So you can pick one of these examples. And now let's say you want to run one of them. You can say gpt script.gpt, right? So here it will actually make a network call very simple, of course, to the OpenAI model. And what we get as an output is hello world. So I'm excited to see where this is going. I think an increasing amount of your code will actually be interacting with LLMs or AI in general. So this is a tool at a programming language level that makes it much easier for you, especially if you're already building apps that are using LLMs. So I want to thank Acorn Labs for sponsoring this video and I want to thank you for watching the video and I hope to see you in the next one.